There's this battle going on between the U.S. and China. America calling them currency manipulators. That's the public consumption. Let's say that China readjusts the yuan. <laughs> you think that the Americans are going to pick up the export market because the value of their currency went up? They'll beat you anyway. As a matter of fact, if they do raise it, then they start buying more of everything because their money is worth more. They buy more gold. They buy more assets. These bubbles keep happening. How come they never learn their lesson? Try talking to an addict, a heroin addict, somebody hooked on nicotine, an alcoholic. Sit down with the addict and say, listen, you know, stop shooting up. They're going to listen to you? They have no bounds. They have no loyalties. They have no boundaries. They're addicts. What we're talking about here, so I make this very clear, that these titans of industry that President Obama calls them, who make nothing other than profits, they make no steel, they don't build railroads, they don't build automobiles, they build nothing other than profits. They're junkies. They're addicts. They're money junkies. That's all they are. They can't get enough. They can't get enough. Bowing down before Warren Buffett. For what? Because he makes a lot of money. Billionaire bonuses. For what? Because they knew how to play the rig game. A bunch of guys cutting up $45 billion in bonuses. Bigger than the GDPs of many nations. They're junkies. So rather than letting the junkie go cold turkey, no, no. Here's more money, junkie. Here, go bet it again. Go, hey, look at those bank profits. Look how they've, look how they've soared since we gave them more money heroin. That's all it is. They're junkies. You have the money junkies on one hand, and you have the power junkies on the other. The power junkies are called politicians. If right now there are food riots going on in India, they keep talking about this great economic miracle that's going on there. I believe over half the people are living on $2 a day. And inflation is eating away that $2 very quickly. You're going to start seeing the same thing happening around the world. Where the values of the currency decline. There will probably be enough food. But there won't be enough money to buy it. And that's where you're going to start seeing the riots happen. More of a, a economic result than an environmental one. And it won't only be food riots, it'll be tax riots. It'll be riots against big governments clamping down on people. The second American revolution has begun. Do you know how angry the people are? They're losing their homes. They've lost their jobs. You have people getting out of college with nothing but worthless pieces of paper called diplomas and $50,000 in debt. They can't get a job stocking shelves at Walmarts or mowing lawns. And they're seeing the too big to fails to get bailed out. You think they're angry? Around the corner from us is Fleischer's. Butcher shop, famous, famous. All Martha Stewart, Time Magazine, on television. You're an organic butcher that buys everything local in the Hudson Valley. Lines coming out the door in that place. You can't get in there on Saturdays and weekends. High quality. So America can go back to the greatness that it was when it goes back to quality. When it goes back to Main Street, not Wall Street. When you stop shopping and buying crap at at Walmarts. And what a, what a pleasure going into a Walmarts. And has all the aesthetics and comfort of a large self-storage unit. And in our Trends Journal, we write about the 20% solution. 20% of the people will buy quality at Fleischer's. 20% of the people won't eat corporate crap. Olive Garden, that's not Italian food. 
20% of the people don't shove McDonald's down their throats. 20% of the people will live up to a higher standard. 20% of the people think for themselves. Move that 20% in a focused direction. We get a, an America far greater than we could ever imagine.